Hello. You clicked on this video because there's some part of you that's not sure if you're saved or if you're a Christian. You're not 100% sure when you face God when you die what's going to happen. And uh, God's laid out in my heart to point something out. Um, first of all, it's really important to understand that there are some people who think they're saved who are not saved. And Jesus spoke about that. In Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 21, this is what Jesus says. Not everyone who calls me their Lord will get into the kingdom of heaven. Only the ones who obey my Father in heaven will get in. On the day of judgment, many will call me their Lord. They will say, we preached in your name, and in your name we forced out demons and worked many miracles. But I will tell them, I will have nothing to do with you. Get out of my sight, you evil people. So how do you know that you're not one of the people that's going to stand before the Lord and say, but I did all of these things in your name and I said that you were my Lord? How, how do we know that that's not going to be you? How do you know it's not going to be me? How do we know it's not going to be us when we stand before the Lord? Um, I think that that's a very frightening thought and it's something that we should take very seriously. So here's, here's what uh, you need to understand. There has been an incomplete gospel taught in the United States, in the Church of America. And this incomplete gospel says that, you know that part in your heart where you're afraid that you're going to die and go to hell? That part in your heart where you know you're going to face God one day? And, and the preachers say, don't worry about that feeling. Because all you have to do is say that you believe in Jesus and you'll go to heaven. And then they say that you can't sin enough to be tossed out of heaven and so you can do whatever you want to and God's going to forgive you because you said you believe in Jesus. So just go live however you want because everything's forgiven and nobody's perfect. None of us can be perfect anyway. This is a lie. This is an incomplete gospel where people are told that being saved means that you go to heaven when you die. And um, it's more to it than that, folks. It's more to it than that. Um, one of the things, now what I'm not saying is that we get to heaven by works. It is by faith that we are saved. But what has really not been explored very thoroughly by a lot of preachers in the United States, in the Church of America, is what it means to really believe in Jesus. Now, what scripture says is that when we place our trust in him, when we believe in Jesus, that we receive the Holy Spirit and we are saved from the power of sin. So there are some things that are supposed to be evident in our life that proves to us and to the people around us and to God that there has been a change that's taken place um, that's evidence that we are indeed saved. Now, if you look in um, 1 Corinthians chapter, um, chapter 13, um, and he's just gotten through, Paul has just got through talking about spiritual gifts, and he keeps on emphasizing um, that it's important to, to pay attention to other people's needs, to be other-oriented. Uh, and to not be caught up in ourselves and our own needs. And he goes on in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians to talk about love. And this is a key passage that is a, a really good acid test to see if your heart is being guided by the Holy Spirit or whether you're walking in the flesh. It says, What if I could speak all languages of humans and of angels? If I did not love others, I would be nothing more than a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. What if I could prophesy and understand all secrets and all knowledge? And what if I had faith that moved mountains? I would be nothing unless I loved others. What if I gave away all that I owned and let myself be burned alive? I would gain nothing unless I loved others. Love is kind and patient, never jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. Love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful, and trusting. Love never fails. 
Now, when I read that, I get convicted because I know that I struggle in fighting the fight against my flesh. I struggle so often with not acting in love and not walking in love. But that's a priority for me as a believer is to try to be hard on myself and to walk in that. And that's the Holy Spirit that's helping me do that. I don't get a big pat on the back because I'm trying to walk in love. I've surrendered my life to Jesus Christ and He is my Lord. And what that means is that I invite the Holy Spirit to live in me and help me be ruled by love. If you're walking around with resentment and anger, if you are holding um, a scorecard in your mind or in your heart against other people and you feel justified to be angry with other people, you're walking in the flesh. Now, I'm not saying you're not saved, but what I am saying is that it does not mean you're saved just because you say you believe in God. Scripture says even the demons believe in God and they shudder. And we know that Satan believes in Jesus and yet he's not saved because he doesn't repent and he doesn't surrender his life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He doesn't allow his life to be guided by the Holy Spirit. So if you think that because one day you said with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you think that because you believe in God and you're afraid of being judged when you die, that that's enough, you've been lied to. We've all been lied to. This is the incomplete gospel that has been passed off in the United States. You want to know why there aren't more miracles in the churches in the United States? It's because our faith is so little and because we've been lied to and been given less than the full gospel. If you go to churches in other countries where there's less money and less doctors and fewer computers and there's more dependency day to day in the God who who supplies and provides for everybody that's where you find the miracles that's where you find people being healed such so much more often you know if if something miraculous happens in a church in the united states immediately there are grumblers and people who say well i just don't know if i believe in that this is starting to get a little far-fetched and it's because we are so alien to the idea of the holy spirit there are so few Um, churches and believers who have totally surrendered themselves to the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying that I'm totally guided by the Holy Spirit 100% of the time. I struggle with sin. This is something that I have to constantly be focusing on. But if you think that wearing a cross around your neck, and because once you said that you believed in Jesus, that you can just live however you want to, and that, well, my sins are paid for, you are sorely mistaken. If your life is not guided by love, if you're not inviting the Holy Spirit to help you live differently than a regular normal human would live, if you're not fighting that fight against yourself and asking God to help you all the time, you might not be saved. I'm not here to tell anybody that I'm better than anybody else. I'm not here to tell anybody that living this life is easy. It's not. It's a difficult life where I have to fight against myself constantly. I have to constantly read the word and pray and ask for God's help. I'm constantly getting on to myself for not walking in love. That's the life of a Christian. If you're not fighting that fight, you might not be saved. I hope you think about that. I hope you understand that being a Christian means you need to be reading scripture. I hope you understand that means you need to be filtering the music you listen to, the movies that you watch, the people that you hang out with, the things that you allow yourself to dwell on in your mind, in your heart. What are your goals? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? If you think that believing in God and saying that you believe in Jesus is enough to make you a Christian, I really hope you'll think twice about that. If you have questions about this, if you need help understanding scripture, there are a lot of believers on YouTube that have excellent insight. You can send me questions. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but the basics are all that really matter, and I can explain the basics to you all day long. If you're saved, you should live differently in the power of the Holy Spirit, and love should be a top priority for you. Please send me questions, send me concerns. I'd love to help you. We don't have much time left, y'all. That 
horn is going to blow. Jesus Christ is going to rapture the church. All of the real believers in Jesus Christ are going to mysteriously disappear. We're going to vanish in the twinkling of an eye. And immediately, there's going to be a demonic explanation. Uh, scripture says that the world will be given over to a lie. And that everyone who's not a believer, it says that everyone who's left behind essentially will, will believe in this lie that's given to them. And ultimately, there will be a, a new church in the tribulation who will be believers in Jesus Christ. And those believers in Jesus Christ, the ones who are left behind, who became believers once the tribulation had started, those people will die for their faith. And then Jesus will come back seven years later. And he will rule this world as the king of the earth. And there will only be one religion. Christianity. One relationship with one God. One Lord. One King. Jesus Christ sitting on the throne in the temple in Jerusalem. It's going to be a really different world then. And it's going to be a major shakeup before that starts. All of these things that are happening in Egypt, all of these governments being overthrown, power changing hands, talk of a one world currency, a one world government. Y'all, if you're not reading the scripture, you don't understand the handwriting is on the wall. We're down, I, I really like what, what a brother in Christ said. He said, we're not down to the last days. We're down to the last moments. The final grains of sand are dropping from the hourglass. Don't wait to seek after Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. It means you've got to surrender. Send questions. Read your Bible. Ask for the Holy Spirit to help you understand. And try to make love a priority in your life.